As you can see, then I'm not in my basement today. I'm actually visiting uh, Amy and we're going to have a very difficult conversation about comping with guitar and piano. And this is something that I get a lot of questions about. So I thought I would ask a real piano player about this and get some insights in this. So we're going to talk about this and most of the conversation is going to be on my channel and then a lot of the performances are going to be on Amy's channel. Yes, I'm so glad you're here. We've connected because of the NAM convention. You said a difficult conversation. We're going to have a difficult conversation. I, this is a very difficult conversation, <laughs> I'm sure. No, but it, it is something. I mean, it is sort of mind-boggling. Like, how, how do you do this? And is it possible to get that to work? Everybody wants to play chords once in a while. And it quickly becomes sort of, uh, am I stepping on your toes? Or are you giving me room? Or So uh, it's a sensitive topic, I'm sure. Well, I think one of the, the most frequent times that the, the problem of, of this happens is in a jam session. Say the guitar player is running the jam session and, and there's keys you know so the piano player steps up it just always happens that they're comping at the same time because they don't think to have a conversation the difficult conversation <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah okay but that's also i think in the jam session usually my advice to guitar players there is actually just be a horn player just be a horn player be a horn player just don't don't comp you know but and you anyway want to be like in the band something so if you get the cue to comp you know you're in the band you can comp <laughs> but for the rest just see what happens also because in my experience I've played a lot of sessions, jam sessions, where I think some piano players are not so used to or comfortable playing with a piano with a guitar player, so they'll just come and trying to sort of elbow your way in. That's uh, never going to help the music. So you kind of feel like if there are two, you feel like piano is the primary comping instrument. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. I think so. I mean that's like uh, it's not necessarily that it has to be like that, but that's sort of in, in, in practical situation that's what I've, I've seen work the best for the music situations where you have to improvise everything right you know jam session just go yeah it's just like okay what we're gonna do days of one and roses and then one two three four yeah the, the, yeah then that's the solution that i think just works the best if you're playing in a session with people you know they will also sometimes cue you to comp or you can also if you know them well enough you can of course also go like oh, i think i want to comp now and you just play one or two chords and then they'll catch up on it and then you just switch because that's the easiest thing to do right say i go to the jam and you're leading the session and and i'm going to sit in on keys and we've got some horn players right drummer and bass unless you speak up i'm going to be proactive about it and, and I'm going to say, hi, my name's Amy, and I want to get straight who's going to comp right now. So will you comp during the head of the tune, and I'll comp for the first solo, and you comp for the second solo, and then and then I'll comp on the on the head out, and you can do fills. Does that yeah. sound good? So why why do we have to have this conversation, Jens? What can happen if we both just willy-nilly comp however we want? Well, the thing is just that you get in each other's ways. When you're comping, you're trying to shape the music, put down like how the how, what the intensity is, the color of the harmony and stuff. And if you have two people trying to come up with that at the same time, that's really confusing for, well, everyone, especially the listeners, but probably also for the people trying to do that. And also what we might return to a little bit later, the rest of the rhythm section, because there are actually more people in the rhythm. Like we're talking about this as this is the piano guitar drama, but actually it's also a drama for the rest of the band. And actually we, nobody talks about this, but that is at least as far as I'm concerned, very important for, for the music. True. It's 2023. It's time to talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, because cause if, I'm, if I'm comping on a gig uh, and there's a drummer, sometimes I'll have a good idea for some hits that are going to repeat mm -hmm. during somebody's solo yeah. and the drummer can pick right up on that and play them with me or vice versa. Drummer yeah. has the idea, I pick up on it. There's another comping instrument. It could be vibes also yeah. um, in the mix. It becomes a disaster. So, yeah, well, or, or it's, it's like then you pick up those the same things. I mean, if you're used to it, and if you know each other, you, you can get away with it. You can. Which is just the same. I mean, and I actually feel that I have almost the same sort of musical discovery going on if I'm playing with a drummer that I don't know because then you also have to sort of okay if I'm doing this what am I gonna what I'm going to get back rhythm mostly rhythmically actually yes. it's like you just I'm, I'm laying in some some hits or some accents some places and I kind of want to hear something as an answer to that yeah uh, and sometimes you get that and sometimes you don't true so Jens, can we play Take the A Train together? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to be the bass player. Okay. And, and you just comp like you might... Actually, I'll take a solo too. Mm -hmm. and, and you comp yeah. like you would comp. Okay. Two, th one, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
Beautiful. Hey, that's the first time we've played together. Yeah. <laughs> 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 really so, nice. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's about finding each other and, and sort of trying to, to uh, win your company, like, like try to not get in the way, but also support, right? Yeah. And, and, and that's just more difficult if you have to do that while communica com communicating with both the, the rest of the ry rhythm section and another comper. Yeah. If I were to play a line like this, one, two, three. With that rhythm? Yeah. How, how might you comp to support that? One, two, three. He's very sensitive. And I would say that, Jens, you're comping in the holes. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, you, you figured out that I had a motif. And, and then I go for that. Yeah, so you, of course, you listen for, for what is going on, on melodically. And if it's predictable, then you try to figure out, okay, well, if I do this, then I'm going to be putting in something where there isn't anything and that will work. Yeah, I'm not getting in the way. Also because it's a very clear rhythmical idea. So if I play something on top of it, it's going to make it more uh, difficult. And actually, that's also a thing that I, I tend to say a lot with comping is that's how you want to comp. We, we are all, always, always uh, thinking about, okay, I need to play the right notes and I need to play the interesting rhythms and stuff. But actually, for whatever soloist is playing, if you're playing something that repeats, something that's a little bit predictable, that's incredibly comfortable to play on. And that gives them a much better starting point to sort of build something and, and, and to work with it. And they can actually also, ease, it's easier for them to interact with you as well. That's Which may, maybe seems kind of weird because you would think like, okay, I'm interacting, so I'm just listening and trying to do something all the time. But actually, if you're just laying back and giving them something that's like, okay, this is, this is the groove, then that, that will really work. Maybe we should try that out actually on the... Let's, let's say that I just lay down some comping and then you try to solo over that. Okay. Two, three, four. Usually what I end up, doing, end up doing with stuff like that is to play sort of these really simple one or two bar grooves that I'll... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And by the third time we do it, the bass yeah. player knows we're going to do it again. The drummer might do it. It hits with Yeah, us. exactly. But if, if we were trying to comp at the same time, and we even did for a second, yeah. it was, we missed it a little bit. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's kind of a disaster. I was going to say, also, with uh, the line that I played, yeah. and then you played in the hole, right? Yeah. You could, once you hear that line, you could also comp in a way that goes. Yeah, I could go in, in on that one. That's true. That's also, and, but that's also the kind of thing where you have to watch out that when you want to do that, you're like, okay, I know what's coming next, and then that's not coming next. Absolutely. <laughs> that, that's, that's like, it's the first time we're playing together. That's not the option I'm <laughs> probably naturally going to take. Yeah, so so playing those kind of two bar grooves that we've that we've learned from playing for a long time and listening for a long time. Yeah. But da da da, sing me one. Do ba do ba. Da ga do da da do wa. Da ba da ba da ba do ba. Ba ba do da ba do da. Da da do do ba do do ba de go do. Da, 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 do, da, do, ba, so, da. Yeah, so for me, I think always hear big band in the back of my mind yeah. with this. That's where I get those kind of rhythms from, really. Maybe because they're clearest and they're, but it's like, that's, that's where you hear them. That's right. We're but, trying yeah. to imitate the horns in a big band. Yeah, essentially. And sometimes if you're in a jam session and, um, and I'm singing, you must take the A train, mm -hmm. the horn player will make a fill. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. Show, will you show me a little fill? Yeah, sure. You must take the A train to go to Sugar Hill way up in Harlem. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you listen to my recordings, because I do always record with a guitar and yeah. piano, my my guitarist and I will decide. I'll say, all right, I'm going to comp on this chorus and you can fill. And then when we get to the bridge, you comp and I'll do the fills. And as a pianist, fills that work well in this situation are, uh, like, can we, can we try the bridge? And I'm not yeah. going to play a bass line, but mm -hmm. you comp. One, two, one, two, three. You better hurry, get on board, it's coming. 
listen to those railways humming on board octaves work well oh yeah i tend to think that way if if i if the guitar player says i'm going to comp now and i'm going to do some fills a lot of times it'll be octaves for me okay. doesn't mean it has to be i could also uh, you better listen and hear those railways humming you know i can, I can go down yeah. low i that reminds me of diana crawl actually yeah. and oscar peterson yeah exactly it's important to think about staying out of each other's um ranges yeah true i think sometimes that could be really difficult for on guitar at least i don't know how, how difficult you find that on piano but that, yeah, it can be kind of tricky it's difficult yeah. in this situation because yeah. it's really hard to think about that when you're having to cover all the rhythm all the harmony plus solo um but in a situation where i'm comping for a guitar player taking a solo where there's a bass player and a drummer also i can really think about it and i just tend to watch i just tend to watch the neck oh, and yeah. if i see you start to go up i typically start to go down yeah and vice versa if i see you start to go lower i'll go higher because we we can cancel each other out but do you find that you can also because i find it sometimes difficult uh to be higher than the soloist. I mean, sometimes you don't really have a choice, but like, yeah. that can be very difficult that you somehow you're up there and then then it's almost like, oh, I'm taking away attention from... It's true. You have to be very delicate yeah. in that situation. And maybe I do that part less often. But I think when the soloist tends to go higher, I, I might go lower. I don't know. I don't know, because that's also what I find that I do a lot more is just not play <laughs> don't be afraid to not play i mean your function is like it, it has to do with what are you trying to do if you're comping then you're trying to so be a part of the music support so sort of the energy that's happening in the piece you also can just leave room and just sort of let the soloist sort of figure out like okay what is what is what what is it you want to do right now and then i can I, it gives me time to sort of figure out okay what's going to fit under this you know think about how often mccoy tyner laid out for john coltrane <laughs> yeah right i think he preferred it at times yeah yeah no definitely yeah yeah and in his later years, he didn't play with a piano player. Sometimes. Yeah, I, was, I, I guess my um, we were listening to that in the car also with Jim Hall. He he lays out really a lot actually. We listened to a few things with Jim Hall. Which yeah. one are you talking about? Uh, the Hampton Horse. Uh, the um, what was that? Was the um, Groove and High? Yeah, that's a great album. Jim Hall is a model yeah. for us about how to do this. Definitely, yeah. I mean, when he can play, he can make a, do an, a duo album with Bill Evans and get that to work together. That's that is <laughs> pretty heavy. Both both of them doing so much and still making room for each other in the music in that way, and then make that great an album. Yeah. Oh, you reminded me just now saying making room. You you were just talking about laying out. I would like to make that clear to everybody that there is no shame in laying out and even laying out for a long time at the jam session. If I if I you know, set it up at the beginning, Jens, you're going to comp for the first soloist. I will sit back and cross my arms and just pretend like I'm part of the audience. It can be a crutch to feel like you have to be playing or yeah, play yeah. all the time. And it's kind of like conversation. You know, if you're, if you're in a group of four people who have a conversation, sometimes you might be quiet for 20 minutes and let other people talk. And that's, that's actually a sign that you're more sure of yourself than if you're trying to interject all the time, right? <laughs> yeah, true. That's, yeah, that's actually very true. Yeah. And that's, that's definitely if you're used to. So I, I think when I perform mostly, I actually play without a piano player. So two, I think it is. I think like two thirds probably. And that also means that you get really used to, especially if I'm a period where I'm mostly doing that, then you're just used to when, when, I, when we're playing a song, I'm playing all the time. So not playing is kind of, that feels a bit weird. <laughs> so you're like, oh, do I really keep track of where we are? Am I going to stay focused? Uh, you know? Yeah. So you just have to, oh, yeah, okay, it's the same. I just have to lean back and listen. It's, that's what I'm doing anyway. It's true, but you're yeah. still keeping track of the form. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, but you do. But it's like, but, but it's like oh, I don't play now. What is going to you know? I mean, I really remember having that on sessions once in a while. You said something to me when we were talking uh, in the car um, that sometimes if the piano player is comping, you'll you'll think of yourself as somebody who makes an eff an effect, a yeah. dramatic effect. Or a, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So so this because when you, when you are in situation, and this is also maybe uh, it has to do with what style of music you're playing. I think very much this. So if we're playing. Uh, take the A train. The traditional role, we, we what we do, just did, that we play sort of comping like this and giving each other space. Or I would do like the whole. Uh, we haven't Freddie talked Green about thing. Freddie Green. We yet. haven't talked talking about Freddie Green, which is which is for that style that really works well. For a lot of more modern, if you're playing sort of just anything that's more modern and actually that's maybe not really fitting, I mm -hmm. think very often. Uh, and then you will, 
as a guitar player, I think what works the best is to think of it as um, as if you can just add something when there's room on top of what is happening in the piano. Mm-hmm. And this is definitely for like more straight eight pieces and more. Um, so, so really, you think? I mean, you actually hear Pavantini doing this with Lion Mills or so on, but but not so often because they rarely have another soloist than those two. So, yeah. <laughs> but but that is kind of the thing that happens sometimes. I would like to play a straight eighth tune with you, but uh, maybe before we do that, we should talk about possibilities if you're playing like Freddie Green. Yeah. So that's actually the one case where I can comp freely if you're doing that. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so. Pretty much everything because the chords that I play are so simple that everything fits, and and also rhythmically, I have a really defined role. It's actually kind of the same as the riffs, right? You're, you're playing something that's very predictable, and playing, and I'm really just setting down the basic, yeah, basic groove. Could we try it with maybe all the things you are? Yeah. And Ooh. you just do Freddie Green, and yeah. I'll and I'll comp like sure. I, like I would two, one, two, three. Four. It works. I can yeah. play whatever I want. He's like a yeah. drummer in this case. Yeah, sure. That's that's really just like tune percussion. And and actually, it's also kind of weird because it's it's. I think sometimes it's looked down upon a little bit because yeah. it's like oh, you're just sitting there strumming especially if you're doing it that's my at least my experience if especially if you do it in a big band pretty much nobody can hear you yeah but it just works with the rhythm section it's the best thing in the world best thing <laughs> it's in the really, world really so great so if you would like to comp at the same time that's an option another option is to make hits ahead of time so arrangement arrangement really, yeah yeah, that way you hit things together. And uh, Diana Krall's band does that all the time. Okay, yeah. And it's just a way to make your arrangements tight in general. But but you can you can even make, you know, harmony lines. Should we think of a, a straight eighth tune to play? Sure. Actually, we could, maybe we can do this with, um, because we can talk about another thing where the guitar player has a sort of predictable part in, in the groove, which would be bossa nova. Yes. So if we do something like Corcovado. Yes. So that. that's a little bit different than what I talked about in terms of sounds. Mm-hmm. But when, then we can actually try the sound thing as well, because as soon as you start playing the, the groove, yeah. I would go to more sounds. Actually, I never, I probably never, never would play the groove. No, that, yeah. And that's also the sort of the original way of doing that. Like Shubin would, would never play the groove. Shubin would, would never play the groove. He would yeah. just lay down, I actually play fills more than harmony almost, but all just lay down harmony. And then... Uh, and then the groove would be in the guitar. Yeah. Should we maybe turn on a play along to do that, do that one? one? Yeah, sure. Okay. Quiet nights of quiet stars, quiet chords from your guitar, floating on the silence that surrounds us. I hope that this is giving some information on like how, how this works, how you can get this to work, so that since it's 2023, it's not such a difficult conversation, but it should be a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we're not making it. anybody uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was great to hang out here in LA and uh, get to, to visit another studio and uh, learn something new about playing together with a piano player. So thanks for letting me do that. Absolutely. And great also to play together. So great to play together. Another thing you're very good at, I know we're wrapping up, but I just wanted to say that you're good at hearing my extensions and not playing, you know, if I play a 13, you're not playing a flat 13 and stuff. And I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But that's the, yeah, that, that is the, the, the next thing that to talk about when you're comping people is like figuring out how to do that. <laughs>